Welcome back YouTube, I'm MTG Joe, and today we're going to be playing Budget Black White Vampires on MTG Arena. So this is one of the starter decks that you normally would get as completing the new player experience. Uh, so what we did is we tried to make a budget uh, upgrade to it uh, without spending really any rares outside of the pre-provided rares that you'd get from just completing any of the new player experience. The only exception that we're doing here is adding in the lands. So we're adding in godless shrines and isolated chapels. Now if you're in a pinch you can just use the tap lands, the like Orzhov uh, Guild Gates and the Forsaken Sanctuary, I believe it's called. Um, they're going to be a little bit slower. We are an aggressive deck, so our lands coming into play untapped is important. But in a pinch, you can use those there. Um, so I wouldn't say this is a fully tuned list. This is kind of a bridge as you start acquiring more cards. Um, but this is a quick and easy way to just add some consistency to a deck. I know it's quite popular on the uh, Arena subreddit. Uh, so this is just something to bridge in the meantime. So I'll walk you through a couple of the cards and our choices. So we have Sky Marcher Aspirant. It's a 1 mana 2-1, which is already a pretty good stats. And then if we hit the City's Blessing, which is basically 10 or more permanents on the field at a given time, it gains flying as well. So it becomes an invasive late game threat. And it is a vampire. We have Vicious Conquistador. Uh, so this is another 1 mana. It's a 1-2 in this case. Uh, whenever it attacks, each opponent loses 1 life. So even if it doesn't get in for damage, it still makes the opponent lose a life. And in this case here, the 2 power, uh, two toughness sorry, is quite relevant against Chain Whirler decks, uh, just to keep our creatures alive afterwards. Uh, in the 2 drop slot, we got Adanto Vanguard. It's just really good against board wipes, keeps us alive. We have the ability to gain life with this deck through our creatures. So... Uh, keeping it alive is quite useful. And then it becomes a 3-1 when it attacks. Uh, we're playing two Martyr of Dust. This is basically just two bodies in itself. When it dies, it creates a token with lifelink. So we're playing a couple of these. Uh, our Lord in this case is Legion Lieutenant, so it makes all our vampires stronger. Uh, very useful in this type of archetype. We're playing two Pride of Conquerors. So this is a buff the team spell, so it's almost like a Lord. And then when we have the City Blessing, it gives them plus 2-2 two, two instead. So this is a good way to win uh, combats and to just push through those last points of damage if the opponent doesn't block correctly. Two cast downs in case there's quite a few larger creatures going around, whether it's Gruul or say like a Gates deck, we could take those down. Uh, you get one Maverin Fiend, I believe, so we're playing one of those. This is a very good card in a Vampire Archetype. Whenever our Vampires attack, it creates more Vampires. So this just allows us to not overextend to the board while still putting increased pressure on our opponent. And then tying the deck together, we have Militia Bugler. So this is one of our non-vampires in the deck. However, its ability to search the deck for the top few cards and pull a creature with power two or less to our hand is a good card advantage engine. So pretty much the entirety of the deck, with exception of Sanctum Seeker, can be taken with the Militia Bugler. Uh, so then we're also playing two Vindictive Vampires. This is basically uh, a Blood Artist effect, so it pen punishes our opponent for creatures dying. Um, trying it out, it's a little expensive in the 4-drop slot. Usually you want these effects in the 2-drop slot, uh, but we'll give it a shot. Then we have one of the Sanctum Seekers, which you get in the new player deck. It's a very good uh, card for Vampires because it drains our opponent just from attacking. Uh, because we are a weenie, for the most part, archetype, Conclave Tribunal is a good catch-all removal spell. Clear the board for our attackers to get in. And then we're playing four Call of the Feast. This just makes uh, three lifelink bodies for the spell. So we'll take it through, play a couple games in ranked, and, or in uh, best of one, and see how we go. It's also really convenient. Our daily today is play black or white spells. So we'll give it a shot. So as we're getting going, if you haven't done so already, uh, and you're looking for a way to support the channel, uh, subscribing is free and easy. Uh, if you enjoy the content, it's a great way to show your thanks, and uh, trust me, it's greatly appreciated. It helps me reach my goals on YouTube. Uh, so we can get started then. I know I mentioned in some past videos we'd be doing a, give a couple giveaways if we hit uh, 100 subs. Uh, we've exceeded that limit, so stay tuned. We will be doing something for our existing subs. Uh, if you're not following on Instagram, mtg underscore joe2, we'll have all the details listed on the, the page there. So this hand here, we really can't play anything till turn 4 other than the Sky Marcher. We can't get a Conquistador, so I'm going to mulligan this. We'll keep this hand and then just try to dig for a line. Godless Shrine's perfect. 
So opponent leads on the diagraph. Uh, so here, here we'll just lead on this, the aspirant. We can play out uh, the spell next turn, or uh, probably go with, so we're not going to block, we'll gain life. Probably the lieutenant, so this looks like some sort of dredge list, zombies. This opponent's on some sort of zombie tribal deck. Uh, here. Let's just be mana efficient this turn. Uh, I don't want to fuel them just yet. So I'll just play back on D. So they kill our lord here, so that hurts a bit. And does it exile? Uh, so here now I think we'll offer the trade. So another lieutenant. Uh, I'll probably just lead on the conquistador. It's probably a misplay there. We should have blocked the diagraph so it could have traded with the glow spore shaman. Opponent has Midnight Reaper. So a land would be good. So we're at least able to swarm the board here. Next turn we could Tribunal the Midnight Reaper. Chupacabra is a nice draw for them there. No blocks since we can't trade. So here we can, but we have to tap our whole board, which isn't really efficient for us. The Conquistadors can at least block the, the two creatures quite efficiently. Other than the Death Baron now, so this gives them Death Touch. So it is lethal, so we do need to block. Let's just throw one in front there. We're gonna Conclave Tribunal the Death Baron this turn. I think we're actually dead regardless here. So we exile the Death Baron. It lowers their power and toughness. No blocks. We block here, take four dead. Okay. Stumbling a bit on lands hurt there. Jump back in there. So there is like a build where you can play a Johnny's Welcome. Just gain a lot of life off it. Um, the card on itself doesn't do too much. And they're like having the importance of removal. If we had something like a cast down would have been a lot more timely. Uh, the Conclave Tribunals, we never really got a chance to play it out. Uh, so this hand... A little awkward again with the 4-drop slot. We might need to go up another land in the deck. Cut down a Tribunal. I think we mulligan. This hand's much better. I think we just want lands at this point. So we could Conquistador into a Danto. It's a good start for us. Opponents on some sort of life gain strategy. So we just gotta hit them harder. Then they could gain life. So really what you need in like this type of deck uh, is something like Radiant Destiny. Okay, so this is just Mono White Life Gain it looks like. So let's tack in. Uh, 
and play out the vanguard. Pass the turn here. So the opponent's going to be able to gain life quite quickly. We need to try to get rid of or swarm the board enough. Okay, so opponent missing a creature there is pretty good for us. If they want to block here, I'm willing to pay the four life. And then we'll just play out the Martyr just to be mana efficient. Next turn we can Bugler. If we hit a land, we can Bugler and Aspirant. They play another welcome out, so opponent's stumbling here, and opponent concedes. So we would have just really swarmed the board, our hand was pretty loaded with uh, creature and creature creators. So even in a matchup like that where the opponent would be gaining a lot of life, we still had some potential plays there. So Chain Whirler is probably an issue for the deck. Um, at first, you really want to get out a Lord in that case. Uh, even something like Legion's Landing, the one mana enchantment which creates a 1-1 one, one vampire, uh, is really good for this deck, so those are other upgrades you can do. Sounds good. We a Danto, and then depending on how aggressive we want to get, a Danto into a Danto, or we can play the Bugler out. Okay, so Mono Blue, we want to be aggressive. Terramander. Probably want to get rid of one of those with the tribunal, so opponent attacks in, that's fine. We're not going to do much there. So we'll attack in here. We'll see how they decide to block, if anything. So they're deciding half they want to block, they don't, so that's fine for us. We'll smash them in for three. And we'll just play out a bugler. Try to hit a one drop here so we can double creature spell next turn. Perfect. Conquistador, and we'll pass the turn. We effectively have five attacking power next turn. Opponent's at two. If they play an obsession out, we can force them to sack. It's fine. They chart here. Trying to dig for some action. Okay, so here we'll attack in with both. So we lead with the Conquistador here, because Adanto serves as more damage. And uh, we'll just pass the turn. And opponent concedes. So... Taking out Mono Blue with the deck was pretty good. We'll run it back for one more quick. So this is an easy way just to make some consistency with the deck. Um, when you get the starter one, it seems kind of split between like a life gain deck with a Johnny's Pride Mate and a vampire theme deck. So it's really just kind of focusing more on the vampire theme. We had the black white life gain version, uh, again leveraging off the powerful militia bugler draw engine. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to keep a hand with triple lieutenant. It's a little awkward. We can't play aspirin on one, otherwise his hand would be nuts. Uh, just this coming into play tap. 
but lieutenant into lieutenant into lieutenant, especially if we could hit another land. Uh, so here I'm actually going to lead on the the martyr. The reason being is they have a removal spell. I'm more inclined for them to take that out. I want to try to put the lieutenants out afterwards. This looks like blue white. Okay, so blue white creatures. That's perfect. So now we can double spell. This makes it relevant that I can attack into the vampire without dying. And we'll play out the aspirant. So turn three, eight power on the board. If we hit two lands, or sorry, if we hit a land, pride's another good card there. And opponent concedes. Just super fast kill there. Just the ability to stack these like this power up so quick. That was a turn four, just overwhelm the opponent. So that was incredibly quick, so we'll run it back. It's good if you need to hit your wins for the dailies. I think it's this deck wouldn't be the best for ranked, especially with so much Esper going around. Without refining it really, you want the Legion's Landing especially just uh, to flip to get the consistent value of creatures going. All right, fresh OV. Keep. Aspirant into Vanguard. Actually, didn't check if we were first or second. Depending on how our opponent plays out, if they play something like a weenie deck, we'll play the Conquistador out because of two toughness first. If not, if we need to be aggressive, we'll play, put out the Aspirant. Actually, we can't play Conquistador on one. We have the come into play tap line for black. Okay, so it looks like Guild Gates. Might be Gruel, actually. They usually play two Guild Gates in that build just to hit with the Chain Whirler. If it is Guild Gates, Vanguard survives Gates Ablaze. So here I'm actually okay, because they usually all have a tap land. If they don't, we only lose two creatures, and we still have six power on board. If they don't, we could kill on this. Actually, can we? So that'd be with the lieutenant, that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah. So if they can't kill one of our creatures with lieutenant down, we win the game. Yeah, so they grow spiral, so the opponent's dead. And good game. Super fast kill. Opponent got to play one spell that game, and we took him down. So good showing for the budget deck. Uh, managed to win every game, I think that was. Um. You know what? Let's do it for the prize. One more for ya. No sense of leaving off the two. Been grinding with mono red on ranked right now just to get back up uh, above golds for the time being. I think I might be building the Galta Gruel next. Seems to be doing well for a lot of people just against mid range mirrors. Uh, yeah, so again, we're on the play. It may be worthwhile to drop one planes for one swamp. We've had a couple of instances where we haven't been able to play the Conquistador on curve. But other than that, it's been pretty good. Next turn we can Adanto and Conquistador. So here we'll attack in, we'll see what they do. This is mono red, so we need to be mindful of the Adanto. And making them use their burn spells on Adanto versus something like Legion Lieutenant would be good. Okay, yeah. Um, 
Let's pay for it this time. But we won't for future. And then we'll just play out the Conquistador. So this is Weaker versus Chain Whirler. By playing out the Adanto here. So if we can dodge a turn a Chain Whirler, we're probably okay. The Lava Coil's fine. So here, let's play out the Lieutenant. Attack with both. And play out the Aspirant. So we're presenting 6-9, so we're one off lethal. We can Conclave Tribunal the Phoenix. So this just looks like Big Red. Or actually we have lethal here. Gotcha! And taking down another deck. 5-0 and oh with Budget Vampires. Taking down Rekindling Phoenix. Taking down Mono Blue. Pretty solid overall. Claim our prize. Get a card. Overall, really good showing for this budget deck. Um, so we'll wrap it up here. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Any obvious omissions that I had from a budget standpoint. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe. Costs you absolutely nothing, and it's greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, and have a great one.